What's good y'all today? I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a full size duffel bag as well as how to do this puzzle patchwork. These bags are great for carry on for flights or for packing all your stuff in for a weekend trip. I already did a full tutorial for a mini duffel bag. And since this pattern follows all the same steps, I figured it probably didn't make sense to just remake essentially the exact same video. So instead, this video is gonna focus on some of the differences between the small bag and the big bag. It's gonna give some extra notes that may help with both of the bags. And since so many of you asked, I'm gonna teach you how to do the puzzle patchwork as well. So I'd recommend using the first tutorial as the video you actually follow along to while making the bag. However, this video is gonna be a great reference for you guys as well. But just so we're on the same page, the full size duffel is gonna use the same seam allowances, hardware sizes, everything like that as the mini duffel. So with the exception of the things mentioned in this video, you're correct to assume that you will follow all of the exact same steps the same way that you did for the mini duffel things will just obviously be bigger for this. The link to the pattern is below. Once you get it, it'll be emailed to you as a PDF that you can print off right at home. It'll come with some extra notes, guides, and some chances to win some free things. Then this video, as well as the first tutorial, will give you the extra information you need, as well as the step-by-step -step tutorial to help you make this pattern come to life. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Honestly, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to do a puzzle patchwork tutorial or not, but since so many of you asked for it, I decided why not, so let's get to it. Starting with the puzzle patchwork, the pattern includes two different sizes of puzzle pieces, but you can do this with whatever size and shape of piece you want. You may also want to adjust the sizes of the pieces to fit whatever piece you're making. You'll notice when I cut out the piece, I'm only cutting the indents on the sides and not the top. That's because when I weave them together, you'll only need to cut the sides. This will make more sense in a second. On the same note, I'm cutting a quarter inch above the top point on the top and bottom. This is so the pieces overlap a bit. I'll start by marking all of the pieces out on the fabric, then I'll cut them out. I'll also want to mark these lines here on the right side of each piece. I'm going to use those markings to line things up. Then on the wrong side, I'll get some glue around this indent and I'll match it up using the lines I marked out and I'll stick it in place. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side, so it's switching vertical to horizontal each time. Each row you do should alternate so that the horizontal and vertical pieces are offset. Then to combine these rows, you'll flip them to the wrong side, and just like before, you'll get some glue just around the indented areas. Then you can lay the indented area on top, making sure the corners line up, and press it down. Then on the next piece, you'll pull the indented side to the top and do the same thing. So you're essentially just going back and forth, kind of weaving it in a way. It should look something like this. I'm just showing you a small portion of it, but you can make the rows as long as you want and do as many rows as you need for whatever you're making. Once you have your piece to your desired size, you'll want to attach it to another piece of fabric before sewing it. I'm going to be doing it with a really thin piece of cotton, but you could even just use interfacing. This is also where the fusible webbing will come into play because I'm going to cut a piece of webbing the same size as my puzzle and use that to fuse it to the cotton fabric. I'm going to go ahead and switch my machine to a zigzag stitch. I'll change the stitch length to about 0.8 millimeters and then I'll change the stitch width to about 2.75 millimeters but you could do really anywhere between two and three depending the size of the puzzle piece. Once you have it on another sheet of fabric you're ready to sew. Since we did this sort of woven technique the raw edge of the fabric you'll want to zigzag stitch alternates as you sew each row and column. So you'll start with the needle hitting on the right side just past the raw edge and zigzag stitch one piece then when you get down to the point it switches sides you'll hit the needle on the right but instead of going back all the way to the left you'll push the fabric over so that your left stitch hits in the same spot your right stitch just hit and now you'll sew the next piece with the left stitch hitting just outside the raw edge and you'll go back and forth for each piece I'm gonna start by doing the columns so I'll sew this piece with the needle hitting just past the raw edge on the right side since as you can see the gray fabric is the one on top here so that's the raw edge I want to stitch and then once I get to the the point it switches I'll push the fabric over so the left is now just hitting past the edge and I'll continue this all the way down the column and I'll do this for each column and since I have two colors alternating I sold all the gray raw edges first 
and now I sew all the rows, so I'll be sewing all of the black raw edges. So I'll go ahead and sew the rows now, doing the same thing, just sewing with the right, hitting the outside, and switching after each piece. It should look something like this with all the raw edges sewn. As you can see, it alternates back and forth. I recommend doing the puzzle a little bit bigger than your pattern piece, and then just cutting the pattern piece out, because if you try to make it to the exact size before sewing, it's probably not gonna work out in your favor. I mentioned changing the size of the puzzle pieces depending what you're using it for, and part of this is just for the look, but it can also be so that the puzzle pieces fit nicely, for example, this panel for the duffel bag, I didn't cut the indents on the sides because I sized this in a way that it'll fit nicely once cut. Obviously, this is a little bit more difficult for the curved pieces, but it's still something to consider when deciding what size puzzle pieces you wanna do. Now onto the duffel bag itself. This pattern has all the exact same pattern pieces as the mini duffel, they're just obviously bigger, meaning that there will be more pieces to tape together. So you can go ahead and get those taped. If you wanna save some time, another thing I like to do for all the rectangular pieces is just pulling the measurements and cutting them with a clear ruler on a cutting mat. I think I can get a cleaner cut this way and it's less pieces to tape together, but you definitely can just cut around the pattern pieces as well. I wanna talk about the heavyweight backing a bit more since I usually only briefly mention it. I typically recommend Decoville Heavy in my videos. There are some better backings out there like Texon for example, but I generally recommend Decoville Heavy when you're starting off because it's a lot more accessible than Texon and it's still a great backing. It's pretty sturdy, but it is still fairly moldable where it's not gonna crease or anything. It has a pretty nice natural structure and it'll stiffen up a bit too once you've bonded it to the fabric, which on the same note, it does have an adhesive on the bottom side. That's this shiny texture you can see, but the adhesive honestly isn't very good. So that's why I recommend using a fusible webbing, which is essentially just a sheet of glue that melts when it's heated. So you can cut the webbing at the same size as your backing and use that to fuse it on a lot better than the adhesive that's already on it would be able to. The first difference you'll notice with the bigger duffel is that the top part of the strap is a quarter inch taller. You'll still fold the top edge down to the bottom fold just like you did for the mini duffel. The only difference is that the center you mark out for the D ring and rectangle ring will slightly change, but you're still gonna follow all the same steps for making the straps. Likewise, you'll glue the straps on the same as you did before, and you're gonna sew them the same as you did for the mini duffel. Another common strap type you'll see on duffels is a rectangular one that are sewn all the way down to the bottom. If you wanna do it that way, you just cut strips of fabric that are two inches wide, then you'll glue them in half to make them an inch wide and sew them down the same distance from the center that the diamond straps are. This is completely a design choice. I just give you guys the pattern and tutorial for the diamond straps because they're more difficult to do. So if you can learn how to do the diamond ones, I'm confident you can figure out how to do the rectangular ones on your own. The rectangular ones would look something like this, where they're sewn down all the way to the bottom of the main panels, and then sewn into the base of the bag like this. In the last tutorial, I talked about making the lining a bit shorter than the base body piece. You do this because since the lining sits inside the base, it's traveling a shorter distance around the curve, and especially since it's not going to sit perfectly tight to the base on its own, it's going to bunch up inside if you do it the same length. So by making the lining a bit shorter, this keeps it tight inside the bag. However, the smaller the curve is, the less the lining has a chance to be off by, which is why for the mini duffel, the lining is only a half inch shorter, but for this full size duffel, it's three quarters of an inch shorter. And as you can see, since I made the lining shorter, it's now sitting nice and tight inside the bag and it isn't bunching up at all. Another difference you'll notice on the big bag is that there's more purse feet. Doing the purse feet in general is optional, but if you want to add them, you'll see markings for them on the bottom strip pattern piece. Another thing I did different for the big duffel is adding two zipper pulls to make opening and closing it a bit easier. This isn't required, but if you want to do this, you just do a close stop on both ends of the zipper instead of on just one side. And you'd also add two zipper pulls with the heads facing toward each other in the middle like this. That's what allows it to open and close two ways. When I talk about shaping the bag and I reference making sure the seams are laying the right way, what I mean by that is I generally like to have the seams facing in towards the bottom of the bag as opposed to out towards the side panel. For duffels specifically though, sometimes the zipper doesn't like to lay that way. So what I'll do is I'll have all the seams facing out except for in the zipper area, I'll have it facing down and this will help the zipper lay nice and flat, but I'll only do it for that area. The rest of the area I'll have facing out. I think it came out really fire. It's a super high quality bag that I look forward to my client getting a lifetime of use out of. 
Plus, it's a perfect size for a carry-on and it's a super durable bag. Here's the bag on body. I'm six foot four, so you have a size reference, but obviously the shoulder strap is up to you what length you make it, so don't worry too much about that. I think this bag came out beautifully and I'm super happy with the size and shape of it as well as all the details. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow. I'm still fairly new at this and I'm learning as I go, so feel free to drop any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to help. If you wanna see some more of my work, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. And if you want more tutorials, make sure to subscribe here. I'm gonna be posting at least once or twice a month. And I'm gonna be doing giveaways for people who purchase my patterns and even people that just comment and subscribe on here. So have fun making your duffel. This pattern truly has so much potential for customization. I can't wait to see what you guys make. I love y'all.